Today is totality minus zero day. It's roughly 7 a.m. on uh, Monday, August 21, 2017. Today, an event that hasn't occurred in 99 years in these United States is about to transpire. A total solar eclipse in which the moon comes between the Earth and the sun. Conditions are nice. Some high cirrus, ribbed cirrus clouds straight overhead. Things can change. Folks to the southwest, depending upon how deep those clouds are, are probably not quite as happy with conditions at this time. But things can blow over. Uh, Vanessa El Marco and I, two days back, went on another one of our little excursions. This time we headed down the road towards the southwest. We headed up. It was, we discovered there was a two-wheel road track to the right. Some folks were camping up there. And uh, we decided to take a loop that El Marco had found on the Topo maps. Well, when we went about this, we discovered there was a fabulous overlook that looked out in the direction of the shadow cast from the moon as it approaches. So, Vanessa and I are on the road right now, 7.30 in the morning, to go hook up with other folks we discovered who were up near the escarpment. And here we are at about a half an hour walk. As you can see, the meadow we discovered about seven days ago is developing a sizable human population. Good morning, Eclipse Watchers. We were just reviewing the schedule of main events with these young ladies over here from Washington State. Basically, Vanessa, at what time does the moon first kiss the sun. 9.08. And then at what time does the totality actually begin? 10.22. And then the last kiss? 11.36. And totality lasts in this location for about two minutes, minutes. and six seconds. I smell the coffee! <laughs> Is the family all here? Good morning. Good morning. Hey. It's expected to get dark. Hey, that's cool. Now listen, we were just out on a stroll the other day, right? And then we ran into Jim and Jerry. Jerry. And they Terry, and they told us about you, the fact you guys have this little conclave going on. We had heard about the, um, what I call the shadow cast of the moon, and we, did, we just spared at any idea we were going to see the shadow cast, and then yet you guys did some work to dig it up, to find a nice escarpment that looks kind of north, west, northwest, and uh, we, were, we were shown it, so that's where we're going to head. I expect all of you are going to do the same thing. We're, we're about two miles north of the center line of the eclipse. At this point, right here, yeah. That's fabulous. Now, Josh here has a really interesting story about how far he, he's been traveling in order to come to this eclipse. Yeah, we saw the uh, an annular eclipse uh, in like 93, 94, and that wasn't quite the real thing. So uh, this year we just took a year off to go around the world, and this was the final thing we planned on the, the entire trip. Because after seeing that annual eclipse, we wanted the real thing, and this is it, the whole culmination. Now, as I understand, months. after this, you returned home base, which is in New York? Yep, New York suburbs. And you had planned from the very beginning to make this the final, final penultimate stop. Final stop of a 14-month trip. We flew here from fabulous. Egypt for this. You ca so your last place that you spent considerable time was Egypt. Was Egypt, and then we got on the plane, changed in Dubai, and flew straight to San Francisco, and drove up here. Fabulous. Day before yesterday. Fabulous. So people are coming from all over the planet. Why? Because this is a 
totality. Yeah. So we'll see you all up at the escarpment. Oh, yes. Yep. And I think uh, first kiss is like 908. 908. We'll, yep. You've we'll, been out there. We have been. It's a beautiful location. Are, are you riding up in the truck with No, us? we're just going to walk up. Okay. Very good. Thanks a lot, folks. So here goes our cohort here. They're heading up to the escarpment where we will be observing the sun throughout the totality as well as the shadow. You gotta catch you. <laughs> as well as the shadow cast. As Vanessa El Marco and I walked along, our first good view of the valley, it's about 20 miles across, that would show us the shadow cast. It's about an hour before the first kiss. Yesterday, when we came out to scope up this location with Michael, we were looking for ribbons. Today, all we got to do is look for the cohort and their motorized contingent. Boy. Our hike lasted much longer than I thought because we went to an upper viewing area, and it's and right now the eclipse oh, wow. is already in progress. Oh. And it's, I call that first kiss. It happened at 9:22, and now the limb of the moon should be beginning to demonstrate, create an um, a prenumbra, a penumbra. But the main show will be the umbra of the moon, so I guess we're gonna all call ourselves umbrites. Here we go. We're probably 10 minutes into the eclipse. This is the prenumbra, or penumbra phase of the eclipse. You can see the moon is approaching the sun since it's totality, not a grazing pass, at a position of about two o'clock. They have a very special filter in them. Okay, from this point, at an angle of 277 degrees, this gives us the lowest view. Might want to walk up a little further, but you can see the distant mountain ridge about 20 miles away. That, the, the shadow should originate from about that point. Having just found our observing spot for shadow cast, this is the current status of the progression. I'd say we're 30% progressed, uh, maybe 20% progressed across the limb. Now I'm zooming all the way out. We dropped a little further down on that knoll, and this is how expansive the view is. And I'm now pointing in the general direction of where the shadow cast will come from. Disappears, and you got to be before. Turn and watch for the shadow. When the shadow comes, turn and follow it, we won't be able to see it very far. But then for the next two minutes is when you want to look at the sun and you don't need your glasses. You're looking for Bailey's pearls. And Bailey's pearls are, the, the sun and the moon are so nearly exact diameters that the moon blocks the sun but the corona light comes through. And it comes through between the mountains on the moon and that causes a lensing effect and that makes diamonds blow up. And then when the uh, so just before it ends, valley. turn and look here again because you'll see the, the daylight coming at 2,000 miles an hour. 2,000 miles an hour? 2,777 miles an hour at this point. To be exact? Yes. Thank you. Po point 0.5. <laughs> it's, it's wrong. We're about 50% progressed right now. You can clearly see that the moon is going to fit sweetly over the image of the sun in the background. When the when the, sh the shadow comes over, in that column of shadow, the air cools so quickly that it contracts and it becomes a low pressure area and the air around it comes rushing in and you can sometimes feel the puff of air from that. And you are? I'm Jim Lowe. Jim Lowell? Lowe. Oh, Jim. <laughs> Sorry, Jim Lowe. <laughs> yep. And you were an uh, aeronautic engineer? Yes. Aer yeah, aerospace engineer. Aerospace, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Yeah. Temperature's starting to drop. The humidity in the upper atmosphere as a result is approaching 
As it does so, we're going to see more and more of this cloudification okay. over our heads. Almost done. And that's going to create some issues. Now you can actually see some real cirrus clouds there, but this haze is the precipitation of water vapor as the temperature drops and less and less of the sunlight is penetrating down to our location. So Michael has loaned us a higher quality filter. The moon's progressed to probably 75% at this point and it's making a crescent out of the sun. Here is getting all set up to capture as much of the diamond pattern, the Bailey beads, as possible. His concern is primarily with the Bailey's beads initially and then the corona, just like El Marco back at our camp out. Meanwhile, the rest of us are going to watch for the shadow cast. So to do this right now, Michael has to use a filter, but later on he'll remove the filter just as the moon fully eclipses the sun. <laughs> so Aaron, do you notice anything different? You feel like it's getting colder. Do you think it's getting a little darker too, maybe? Is it getting a little darker? Sort of. You, yeah, so that boy, that moon is really choking the sun out right now, isn't it? Well, I'm starting to get goosebumps. I can feel it getting colder too. I'm getting goosebumps too, but for an entirely different reason. <laughs> the moon's about 85% progressed. We probably have five minutes left before we got to switch over to shadow cast mode. I have no more than 10 minutes. So, when this thing starts, remember everybody look out at the, uh, the horizons out on the sides of the U2. Temperature is dropping. Actually, my sunglasses are getting foggy. Man, it's getting so. My eyes are watering. A little bit of pressure on my head, and it's starting to get pretty chilly. And there's, to be exact, 24 people gathered here. We're seeing a tremendous amount of humidification occurring over the distant mountains as the cooling effect of the shadow starts to happen here. You can hardly see the Ochocos anymore. Oh, right. it's even less than 30 seconds. Oh, look at those. Guys. There's a star coming out. That's uh, Venus. I think that's Venus over there. Oh, well, we're doing oh that. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's start. I'm going to start with that. Venus. We're starting to see uh, uh, the morning star. Venus. We're starting to see Venus. Venus is moving. Oh, maybe it's an airplane. Maybe Sorry. it's an airplane. Could be an airplane. I thought it was it Venus at like first. Like You're right. It's moving. Way too far. Oh, <laughs> okay. Like Jupiter, Thirty anyway. seconds. Ooh, look at wow, that horizon. Look at this. Look at, so small. Oh, look at this. Okay, we are within 30 oh seconds my God, of shadow it. cast. Everything's getting very dark, folks. Okay, okay. Uh, wow. We're about to lose the sunlight. We should be seeing the shadow race across the valley, in the basin, any instant. Oh, here it comes. Where? <laughs> wow. There it is. We got it. Wow. It's racing right up towards us. <laughs> All right. Bring it on. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Ms. Moon. Here we go. Oh, look at the sun. <laughs> Sweeping around. Look at the sun. <laughs> okay, we're now seeing the moon co completely cover the sun, allowing for any anomalies in the camera. It does appear as though we are seeing the corona. The moon's limb is very sharp in this camera. And we're able to observe it, of course, without any filtration whatsoever. It's possible. You can see the solar flare on the right. Yeah. That's a hole in this guy. There's some beads straight up at the 12 o'clock position. There's a little declivity in the moon. Sky. 
It's also possible that some of that light, much of that light is just basically... Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at this getting light out here too now. There we go, that's it. That's how as long as it lasted. Wow. Backing out now. Swinging the camera around. Now we see the sliver. And now we see the light approaching us from the direction that the moon just passed. That was really quick. Some 2300 mile an hour approach on the part of the moon's shadow. See stars. Look out at the horizons. Oh, good, goodness gracious. I think it's still getting dark. It's still getting darker. Wow. Okay, we're now seeing the moon cup completely cover sun, allowing for any anomalies in the camera. It does appear as though we are seeing the corona. The moon's rim is very sharp in this camera. We're able to observe it, of course, without any filtration whatsoever. It's all relay out there. It's like, it's like dawn. It's there. It's dawn. Look up, we don't have that much time. You see the lights going to race across. You can see the solar flare on the right. Yeah. That's a hole in this guy. There's some beads. Straight up at the 12 o'clock position, there's a little declivity in the moon. Like, I'm going to have to do a lot of It's also possible that some of that light, much of that light is just basically... Oh my goodness! Look at this getting light out here too now. Glasses back guys, glasses back on. Look, here comes the light. There you go, that's it. Wow. As long as it lasts. Wow. He's backing out now. Hey, it's getting brighter! Bringing the camera around. It's getting brighter! Now we see the sliver. Now we see the light approaching us from the direction of the moon. Just, uh, it just got that was really quick. Some 2300 mile an hour approach on the part of the moon shadow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> two seconds, like two se two, two minutes past, like. That so, what did you think of that sky? <laughs> and then it's over. So, anything you'd like to describe about your experience? <laughs> awesome. It's just awesome. odd. Weird. Oh, it was just weird. Very weird. Amazing. Yeah. That's the oddest very thing heavy. I've ever seen. Can we do it again? Yeah. <laughs> no, let's take do another two. Take you know where the next one is, don't you? The next yeah. one is in Taiwan. The next one? Yeah. Is in Taiwan. 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 Yes. Uh, and when is it? Uh, uh, 20. 2020. And the oh, last 20. one, of course, was in the United States. That was a totality. Was it's already brightening up. Certainly, our countenances are pretty bright. It is. We got folks off there with their cameras, and others who have just enjoyed it as a raw, perhaps a romantic experience. We still have a star right above us. I don't really see it race. It's kind of really cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like a line. Well, you know that shadow is like 70 miles across. So, I mean, it's a 70-mile shadow. So it would be like pretty much like a line. Yeah. Well. So Jeff and I just got a ride back uh, from the trail back to this uh, road. We're camped up at the top and it looks like everybody's pulling out. Look at this. <coughs> so here we are walking back on our way to our campsite and met these people from Deutschland. Yeah, from <laughs> the Hamburg area. Hamburg. Yeah, so we... Uh, in Hamburg, we had we would have been have to wait until uh, twenty one twenty or something like that. So we decided to come here. <laughs> when Just did a you, little shortcut. You could be around at twenty one twenty, maybe. Right, but they're not going to have the technology for us to be around yeah. at twenty one twenty. You might be living inside a microprocessor. <laughs> so when did you decide to come? 
How long? Uh, half, two half, years. Half two years ago. No, no. Yeah, but the, the initial decision was at least one and a half years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And we, we make, made right. the booking for the flight uh, half oh, a year ago. Two. Well, I want to say willkommen. <laughs> <laughs> and you flew into San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you've been camping for the last three weeks, mostly. No, no, no. We're not camping. We, we, oh. we had, a, had a house near uh, Yosemite, and then we had some motels. Ooh. Oh, Yosemite too, huh? Yeah. Sampling some Beautiful of the best trip. country. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, any experience of the uh, eclipse, you want to? It was nothing special. No, it no. wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you wasted every dime. <laughs> oh, Deutsch no. Europe. <laughs> I, uh, what I really, uh, what I really found interesting was the colors. The colors were totally odd. This was. I agree. Unbelievable. We didn't. Did you see any of the diffraction phenomena? Yeah. yeah. We actually laid a t-shirt, a white t-shirt, yeah. on the ground. We didn't Ooh. get that. We oh. were so caught up in just watching the shadow come <laughs> yeah. racing at us and then turning onto the sun. Yeah. And some some moments, it was a feeling like uh, if uh, they're uh, coming up uh, uh, unknown flying objects. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Right. So, oh, yeah. like a jet was whizzing overhead. Yeah. And so half an half an hour before the eclipse, it was some, it was, it was a feeling like. Uh, waiting for New Year's Eve, a little bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm from Colorado, and uh, this is my first experience doing this. Wow. And uh, I thought it would be, you know, not that crazy, but it was intense. Uh, yeah, I guess the word I think is ethereal. You know, like uh, I thought it, like a partial eclipse and a total eclipse would be pretty similar, but uh -huh. it's just a totally different thing. Totally different creature. Yeah. Did it affect? How did it affect you kinesthetically in your body? Did oh. you feel anything weird? Or? It got colder. Definitely got colder. Got colder, yeah. And the overcast in the sky, uh, that was weird. Yeah, that was weird. Cloud formation, do the temperatures getting colder? Yeah. So, wow. So this is your first total eclipse that you've oh, ever yeah. had. And oh, you'd yeah. seen annulars before. No, never actually. Never saw an annular. No, but I've seen, I've seen pictures. Partials. But pictures don't do it justice or anything. Well, all things come to an end. Certainly things that have to do with the motion of planetary bodies. Now we're going to check in finally with El Marco and see how it worked for him. Hey. While Vanessa and I headed off to the escarpment in order to have a look at the shadow cast, El Marco has been hanging back here with his camera, running through a scripted routine to get as many shots as possible at different exposure rates so that he could image every possible aspect of the eclipse. How did it turn out, Elmar? Oh, it was amazing. An amazing experience, like nothing else in nature. Really, that? I mean, let's say you went out in the middle of the woods and saw a grizzly bear. Would well, that, that would be an amazing experience <laughs> as well. That's true. Are, are you, you pulled in a 112-foot-long tarpaulin out in the, off the coast of Cuba like in the old man in the sea? That would be an Pretty incredulous amazing. experience. That's true, yeah. So how would you characterize the overall experience you've had here? It was freaky, actually. I could see how the ancients would be really scared by that. Our eclipse was only two minutes long, but three times that length, six or seven minutes of darkness? Wow. Pretty, pretty, I could see how they would be freaked out. One thing we noticed on the um, shadow cast was that it got so cold, so many clouds formed, that there was no real defined edge to it because a lot of the light was being diffracted by the cloud, so it made it just look like this ominous, amorphous thing coming at us. And it just got oh, went from bright cast. to dark. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, folks, this is the last kiss of the moon's shadow on the sun. And we here at Adlib Productions really appreciate the fact that we could share this experience with all you YouTubers out there. Adios.